Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, students, welcome to tonight's nice lecture of the Cranfield branch of the Royal Nautical Society. I'm Professor Genov, and I've been the chairman of the local branch for the last 10 years. Um, so I will have the pleasure of introducing the speaker tonight. But as usual, uh, some housekeeping uh, words. I'm very pleased to say that if we were to hold this meet this uh, lecture in our on campus, the capacity of our lecture theater will not be sufficient to accommodate all the people that registered. We've got over 300 people registered for the lecture, which is one of the positive outcomes of this COVID crisis. For that reason, I will ask you, I see most of you have uh, muted your microphones. Perhaps it will help at some point also to switch off your cameras to free bandwidth for the, for the presentation. The actual schedule will be, will start now and the speaker will have probably about an hour to complete the lecture. Then I will open the forum for 15 minutes questions, but, uh, to make the, the whole process manageable, I asked my uh, helpful colleague, Dr. Craig Lawson and Dr. Andy Foster, who are both involved. Craig is the secretary of our branch to group the questions into similar groups so that they will read them at the end and uh, Sergey uh, will attempt to answer them and I'm sure he'll answer well. After which I will invite Professor Ian Gray, who is the Director of Aerospace to give the vote of thanks. So we expect to finish somewhere around quarter past nine, 20 past, sorry, quarter past seven, 20, 20 past seven tonight. So with this uh, housekeeping words, uh, I would like to introduce, and by the way, uh, please write your questions on the chat, on the chat line which will should appear on the right of your screen so that Craig is able to uh, summarize the questions for the end of the presentation. To introduce the speaker, uh, Dr. Sergei Kiselyov, he obtained his PhD in low temperature physics at Cornell University in the United States. And following that, he began began his career in high-tech industry with Hitachi in the Silicon Valley in developing novel information storage. Following that, he worked at uh, McKinsey and Company focusing on energy, sustainability, and public sector work in the former CIS countries. Following that, uh, he led e-mobility Europe to NLX, the NL Group's advanced energy business line, and currently, he is the head of Zero Avia based in the company's facility. We are very pleased at Cranfield University. So with this uh, short introduction, over to you, Sergey. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marin. Thank you uh, very much. Let me just uh, uh, share the screen. And uh, I hope it works. Okay, now it should uh, work. Yeah, I am. Uh, um, I am very thankful for uh, for you and for the uh, for the rest of the organizers to invite me and uh, uh, share some of the um, uh, thoughts and some of the results we uh, we obtained uh, uh, at Cranfield. Uh, we are pr very proud to be uh, uh, to be there and uh, uh, collaborating and working with. Uh, with some of you guys have uh, some of the familiar faces, so that's um, that's great uh, to see you. And um, uh, uh, as you can see, the topic uh, is uh, the hydrogen aviation is uh, becoming the reality. But uh, before I start uh, to talk about the aviation, I wanted to give um, uh, a couple of words about uh, uh, the hydrogen um, uh, ecosystem uh, overall. Hydrogen is not. Um, it's one of the most abundant uh, um, molecule in, in the world. And uh, actually it's quite a big industry if you think about this. Uh, it's uh, uh, every year uh, industry is producing about uh, 100 million tons uh, of hydrogen. And uh, with the cost of uh, production of about uh, $1 per kilogram, uh, currently it's, uh, as you can uh, do the math, it's a $100 billion uh, industry. 
and uh, uh, primarily use um, uh, is uh, actually in the in industrial applications. Uh, so this is uh, uh, to produce uh, fertilizers. Uh, it is uh, refineries. But um, uh, if you think about uh, the source uh, of the uh, uh, of, of hydrogen, it's primarily um, what people c call uh, gray and uh, brown uh, hydrogen. Uh, gray and brown hydrogen is produced uh, from methane uh, using some uh, uh, processes uh, like the steam uh, uh, reforming and uh, cracking um, uh, processes, uh, which uh, produce um, uh, hydrogen. The problem with that. Uh, is that uh, uh, if, if you produce hydrogen from uh, methane, for example, per one kilogram of uh, hydrogen, you emit about uh, eight kilos of uh, CO2. So this is by no means uh, 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 environmentally friendly uh, process. So uh, here are the new advances um, uh, which um, uh, allow us to produce um, uh, green hydrogen, and uh, which is uh, completely environmentally friendly, uh, when uh, we use um, uh, renewable power generation, uh, which is produced uh, by wind or solar uh, or hydroelectricity, uh, or even uh, nuclear power generation, uh, we can uh, uh, we can produce uh, we can use that uh, electricity in electrolyzers, which use as input this electricity plus uh, water. Uh, then on the output we have uh, uh, so-called green hydrogen. So currently, out of uh, uh, all hydrogen produced uh, today, uh, much much less than one percent is uh, is actually green hydrogen, and um, uh, this is uh, going to change. Uh, and uh, this is this is going to change due to two factors. One is the the prices of uh, uh, the electricity, uh, renewable electricity, is going down significantly, and uh, the the cost uh, of equipment, those uh, electrolyzers, uh, is uh, actually going down. We'll talk about it in uh, in a second. On top of that, uh, there is a lot of uh, interest uh, in hydrogen uh, coming from. Uh, all other uh, uses, not only industrial uses, but uh, for example, in the residential uh, application, uh, people started to use uh, uh, hydrogen to produce uh, uh, electricity, for example, using fuel cells, similar to what we are using uh, in our aircraft. Uh, people are thinking uh, and starting to, to do pilots with uh, the heating processes, but uh, the most relevant uh, for us is uh, to use, uh, uh, for the topic of today's discussion, is of course to use it in uh, uh, in transportation. So you can, um, if you are at uh, Cranfield campus, uh, you can see uh, Toyota Mirai with uh, Zero Avia label on it. So we are driving, uh, uh, we are walking with talk, uh, the talk and uh, using our hydrogen uh, powered vehicle, um, ground vehicle as well. So there are a lot of uh, uh, other different players which are using, um, uh, starting to use hydrogen for uh, buses, uh, for trucks. Uh, there are some pilots uh, actually uh, which are uh, utilizing hydrogen fuel cells for uh, uh, marine applications uh, like ferries or, or even uh, container ships. Uh, there are, uh, uh, when I talk about hydrogen, people asking why hydrogen and why now? So um, from, uh, from uh, the, the slide uh, above, you just saw that uh, hydrogen can be used uh, for a lot of different applications and some of them are becoming uh, relevant uh, like uh, transportation uh, now. Uh, the prices of uh, uh, hydrogen and especially green hydrogen are decreasing uh, quite significantly, uh, significantly. So for example, um, the renewable prices um, uh, of electricity are now competitive with, uh, with the traditional power generation. So you can expect that uh, uh, the uh, installed capacity of um, uh, of wind and solar uh, generation is uh, is, incre is going to increase multiple times compared to today, and the uh, hydrogen can be used uh, actually to buffer uh, the the uh, renewable power generation or store uh, energy in the form uh, of hydrogen. Um, uh, for example, when um, uh, the sun is shining and uh, the um, uh, wind is blowing, then uh, you know renewable power generation or renewable electricity is produced. But at those moments, there might not be 
uh, uh, enough demand of electricity. And uh, typically during those times, uh, the prices uh, uh, of uh, electricity actually become negative. So, uh, and these are exactly the times when uh, it's the most uh, uh, convenient and the most profitable to produce uh, um, um, green hydrogen. And uh, on top of that, uh, as I said, the, the prices the, of uh, electrolyzers, which are actually producing this green hydrogen, are decreasing quite significantly. Uh, in the last uh, a few years, the prices went down uh, by, uh, by the factor of two, and we're expecting that uh, in the next decade, they will drop down even, uh, uh, even more by the factor of two or, or, or three. And uh, if you look uh, at different uh, forecasts of different uh, players, uh, different analysts, you can see that uh, um, by 2050, uh, hydrogen is deemed to um, uh, uh, play a significant role in the reduction of emissions. And um, different, uh, of course, different people show different numbers, but uh, if you look at uh, blue, uh, uh, Bloomberg New, New Energy Finance, they, they predicting that uh, it will be um, they will play a role in, the, in cutting the uh, total emissions by 30% uh, from today's level, and uh, uh, that uh, about a quarter of all energy needs will be satisfied uh, uh, by, um, uh, by hydrogen. And um, uh, as you can hear uh, uh, from everywhere, from across the whole globe, uh, in, from Europe, U uh, US, uh, China, uh, you know, Asia overall, uh, Australia, uh, different governments uh, are supporting this uh, um, uh, green hydrogen uh, revolution or you know hydrogen revolution and uh, there are a lot of different programs uh, which are actually pushing um, uh, the um, uh, uh, pushing the use of hydrogen both from the from the generation from uh, green hydrogen production side but also from uh, uh, from the uh, green hydrogen demand side uh, in all the different applications we just um, uh, talked about. In uh, transportation, uh, this the concept of using hydrogen is actually quite uh, quite developed, and uh, I just put a few pictures of uh, how people see that. So, for example, uh, we uh, lead different discussions with uh, uh, different players, including the airports, which uh, we foresee um, as uh, major players, uh, as and uh, they can play a role of the basically the, uh, the focal points of the hydrogen ecosystems, um, um, which can be built around them, because um, uh, we understand that uh, uh, they can be uh, significant players, not only uh, for the aviation, but also for the ground transportation. For example, uh, the, the, the buses, uh, the taxis, uh, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the trains, and uh, even the ground uh, transportation, uh, like the forklifts uh, and, um, uh, and other um, uh, on the ground stuff can be uh, transported using uh, uh, hydrogen powered uh, uh, vehicles. Now, why um, we went into hydrogen uh, in, uh, in, in aviation, why we're talking uh, about it? Uh, um, we, uh, if, if you think about this, and look at the um, environmental impact uh, from aviation. Uh, it's uh, today uh, about two to three percent of um, all um, CO2 emissions come from um, uh, from hydro or from uh, uh, from aviation. Now, if you calculate the induced environmental impact due to uh, the uh, different oxides which are produced also during the um, the, the, the combustion. Uh, of um, of jet fuel in in turbines, uh, if you look at the contrails, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you can see that uh, this number actually increases to about five to ten percent of the total um, uh, climate impact uh, from aviation. Uh, these numbers uh, or the share of uh, of that will uh, is projected to increase quite significantly, and uh, this is due to the fact that uh, you know, of course uh, COVID situation, you know, we. Uh, we hope uh, that uh, the industry will recover very fast. Uh, the, the different forecasts say that in the, in the next couple of years, we will have uh, pretty much uh, full recovery to, um, uh, to pre-COVID uh, times. But uh, uh, the rest of the industry um, is actually uh, improving the environmental impact and CO2 emissions uh, quite significantly. And if we in aviation don't do anything, then uh, this uh, number of five to 10% uh, 
will increase to um, a quarter to even uh, half of all the emissions uh, can come from uh, uh, from um, uh, uh, aviation. In industry, there are a few different uh, technologies uh, which are uh, being discussed right now, uh, which can uh, uh, help uh, to um, um, combat um, uh, the um, CO2 emission or environmental impact. Of course, different uh, initiatives or different improvements in uh, airframes, uh, in uh, you know, in the wings, the wind tips, uh, uh, which improve the efficiency uh, of the airplanes uh, and uh, the on the ground operations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We are not talking about them. I'm talking about uh, mostly uh, propulsion here. So out of, uh, in propulsion, we're talking about um, six viable options uh, and I will go uh, through them one by one. If we start with the battery electric, uh, which, is, uh, which, uh, which became quite popular um, and a big topic uh, after the advance of the um, uh, electrical vehicles and the uh, evolution of the prices of the, uh, of the batteries, you can see that uh, the major issue there uh, and and th th this is the reason why it uh, it, it will not take uh, um, be the, the technology of the future which will take over uh, the, the current propulsion technologies is because uh, the energy density. So currently it's uh, 40, uh, 40 times uh, lower energy density compared to jet fuel and uh, this gap is just uh, uh, really hard to overcome. And on top of that, uh, batteries have uh, long uh, duration in terms of the charging, and uh, every single time you charge and discharge, it comes as um, as, as an OPEX uh, because uh, uh, they have quite limited uh, number of uh, cycles in terms of uh, charging, uh, charging and recharging. If you talk about uh, the hybrid um, uh, tur turbine and electric. Uh, uh, in principle, uh, they, they can save, uh, uh, they, they will reduce the, the emissions, but uh, at the same time, it's, uh, uh, it's believed to be quite uh, um, marginal uh, and still uh, the, the main emission will be, uh, or the main emission source will be uh, preserved. Now, if we go to biofuel, biofuel uh, is not scalable enough. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, there is uh, quite a significant uh, competition of um, the land use uh, for food, and uh, in different countries, it's uh, it's actually an, a no-go, and uh, basically due to the fact that it's uh, uh, it's it's a not scalable, and b it's uh, uh, still produces uh, uh, different um, uh, induced uh, emissions, um, uh, which I just talked about uh, uh, before. Uh, basically, it's. Uh, uh, it eliminates the uh, net uh, uh, carbon emissions, but it still preserves uh, the rest of the emissions. Synthetic uh, uh, fuel uh, is, uh, is 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 very big on the agenda of uh, uh, of the air uh, of uh, uh, different airlines and uh, different governments. And uh, um, fundamentally, if you think about the cost of producing the synthetic fuel, it's uh, quite significant uh, compared to. Uh, to hydrogen, for example, because hydrogen is used here as uh, as a feedstock, and uh, uh, when you uh, burn synthetic uh, or when you use synthetic fuel, it's used uh, pretty much similar to uh, uh, to uh, jet fuel, but at the same time, it preserves uh, all the even if it's uh, uh, carbon neutral, uh, all the induced uh, impact uh, environmental impact is still there. Uh, in H, in hydrogen turbine, still uh, you will have some uh, induced uh, uh, emissions. I will talk about them uh, um, uh, in a second. And uh, in the hydrogen electric, uh, basically, if you have, uh, um, uh, if you use uh, zero uh, or green hydrogen, then uh, you uh, will have very uh, low uh, emissions. And um, uh, this is. Um, um, not our research, just uh, got it from uh, one of the uh, analyst reports. And uh, basically this is uh, uh, how uh, you need to think about the impact of different uh, fuels. Uh, uh, in this case, the synthetic fuel, uh, hydrogen turbine and uh, hydrogen fuel cell. This is exactly the technology which uh, we are utilizing uh, compared with each other. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, covers pretty well uh, the um, uh, impacts, environmental impacts I just talked about. So uh, again, even if uh, uh, all three technologies uh, have direct uh, net zero, 
uh, uh, CO2 impact. Uh, the um, uh, 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 nitrogen oxides, um, uh, water vapor, contrails are still present in uh, uh, in the synthetic fuel case. It's uh, becoming slightly uh, smaller uh, impact in uh, in terms of the hydrogen turbine. Uh, but uh, if you uh, go uh, to a hydrogen fuel cell, you can see that it's uh, yeah, except for the uh, water vapor, uh, which is actually emitted uh, in uh, in, uh, in the form of little droplets, not uh, very fine mist uh, or contrails, like uh, uh, we have the uh, emissions uh, from, uh, uh, from the traditional turbines, uh, you can see that you can reach uh, uh, almost um, uh, zero impact uh, um, uh, from, um, uh, in terms of the greenhouse uh, um, gases. And um, our mission um, or vision of the, uh, of how the uh, how hydrogen will be used in uh, in aviation is shown here. So basically, in the ideal scenario, uh, we have our uh, fuel cell powered um, uh, uh, airplane, and uh, the hydrogen uh, tank uh, is fueled by the hydrogen uh, by green hydrogen, which is produced by electrolyzers, which we just talked about. Uh, uh, which uh, utilizes uh, locally produced uh, um, uh, renewable uh, electricity from wind turbines and uh, and photovoltaic cells. And uh, actually, when uh, when I'll talk about uh, our setup at uh, at Cranfield, it's uh, very nice to see that uh, uh, Cranfield Airport actually has uh, some of the solar panels installed. And uh, airports in general uh, can be considered uh, as uh, uh, areas where you can in install uh, some of, at least some of them, um, uh, renewable power generation, which can be used to uh, uh, to produce uh, in situ uh, green hydrogen. Hydrogen is uh, becoming uh, uh, very, very popular in all the discussions, and uh, you can see a lot of uh, different publications, there are different conferences. Uh, um, uh, which uh, which I dedicated to, uh, to to hydrogen. There was uh, a big report uh, um, which was published uh, under the uh, Clean Sky Initiative. Uh, um, Airbus just um, uh, about six months ago announced uh, about um, uh, the um, uh, advent of the uh, different uh, hydrogen uh, propelled uh, um, uh, three different uh, archetypes of uh, of the new uh, aircraft and. Uh, it seems like um, uh, in the last year, uh, the last year was uh, actually uh, the uh, when uh, hydrogen became a really, really popular topic, not only uh, in aviation but also in uh, in the rest of the uh, society and uh, economy. And we are happy to be participating in um, uh, in this uh, hydrogen revolution. So um, this. Uh, um, is not possible if we are not competitive. Uh, I, of, of course, you know the the carbon and environmental impact, carbon emissions and the environmental impact is uh, is, is very important. Uh, uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, people want to not only use the clean fuel but also um, use uh, uh, achieve certain economies um, uh, in when they uh, use the novel uh, novel technology. So uh, uh, what we see now is that uh, uh, different uh, uh, projects uh, uh, which, which exist today, uh, they um, are showing something between three and four uh, dollars per kilogram of, uh, of hydrogen. And uh, if you think about this, how it is uh, compared to, uh, uh, to the price of, um, of the jet fuel, which is uh, uh, used today, so if we do uh, certain calculations, you can see that that uh, about $2.5 per kilogram, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we will be com uh, comp comparable uh, to uh, jet fuel with, uh, with the price of about uh, $1.5 per gallon, which is exactly what um, airlines uh, are paying now for, um, uh, for jet fuel. And maybe it's uh, a bit on the low, uh, low side. So, 
the uh, what we see in from 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 the industry is that uh, from from the hydrogen uh, production, uh, we can see that uh, the, the the price is going down so fast that uh, uh, basically in the next couple of years hydrogen will be competitive uh, uh, with uh, uh, with the jet fuel, and uh, from today's um, uh, prices of about. Um, Let's say you know three to four um, uh, dollars per kilogram. Uh, again, different uh, analysts are predicting that uh, uh, the, uh, the the price uh, of hydrogen, green hydrogen, in in 2050 will be less than uh, uh, one dollar per kilogram. So as you can see, that not only we can achieve the zero emissionness uh, uh, of the hydrogen. Um, uh, propelled um, or, or, or driven aviation, but also uh, the cost uh, significant, can achieve significant uh, savings. In order to solve uh, those, uh, to to, uh, uh, to fly uh, using hydrogen, of course, uh, you know, it comes, uh, we need to do uh, quite significant uh, uh, breakthroughs and, and developments. And, uh, you know, some of them are already achieved uh, by us and, uh, and, and, and by industry, but, uh, you know the rest, um, uh, especially if you go to uh, um, uh, and and uh, uh, fly uh, narrow body um, uh, aircraft and uh, the wide bodies. I think uh, uh, these uh, certain uh, aspects uh, in terms of the technological developments need to be um, uh, to be done. So uh, the first is, uh, of course, the power density of the fuel cell systems. If you if you look at uh, today's turbines, uh, you can uh, see that they uh, they have uh, 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 power density between, uh, let's say, uh, three kilowatt uh, per kilogram, uh, going to, uh, you know, ten uh, kilowatt uh, plus uh, per kilogram. Now, uh, the fuel cell uh, systems which we are using now, uh, they are um, about, um, let's say, between one and one and a half now, and we need to go to, uh, we need to close the gap, and. Uh, we understand that um, uh, there can be some developments in terms of the uh, uh, low temperature PEM uh, technologies uh, for the for the fuel cells, but uh, also use uh, uh, high temperature uh, PEM or uh, uh, technologies uh, for the fuel cells, which can uh, actually be able to close the gap with um, uh, with the, uh, today's um, uh, power densities, which which can be achieved in uh, today's turbines. Uh, then, uh, if you look at the weight of the fuel cell system, um, hydrogen is uh, e extremely energy dense. Uh, it has uh, more than three times uh, more energy density than the jet fuel. But unfortunately, uh, if you uh, if you want to store it, uh, it, it uh, the tanks uh, which, which which can store it safely are pretty heavy. And uh, for example, the tanks which we are utilizing now um, uh, have between five and 10% uh, in terms of the uh, hydrogen um, uh, storage um, uh, density. So basically per one kilogram of hydrogen, we need to, uh, uh, to have uh, about uh, 10 uh, kilograms of, uh, of hydrogen tanks or you know, between 10 and actually 20 uh, uh, kilograms. And, uh, there are two uh, avenues to do that. First, of course, is to achieve, uh, 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 to go to uh, uh, different technologies in terms of the tanks. Um, uh, carbon, uh, currently, we are using the, uh, the, the, the fiber um, and composite uh, tanks um, uh, for, um, uh, for storing uh, hydrogen. And uh, slowly but surely, uh, they're improving. And uh, currently, we, uh, uh, we are discussing um, uh, with one of the partners, uh, actually, production of the fuel cell uh, um, uh, or hydrogen tanks with uh, about 13% uh, uh, um, um, gravimetric density. Uh, the next step, of course, is to go from uh, hydrogen gas, uh, which we are using uh, and, and storing at uh, uh, 350 atmospheres uh, uh, today, to, uh, uh, to liquid hydrogen, which uh, will uh, uh, enable us to achieve another 3x improvement in terms of uh, the uh, savings, in terms of uh, uh, the, uh, the weight of the tanks. Then, uh, of course, the volume. Uh, even if um, uh, hydrogen is uh, three times more energy dense it's, uh, uh, than jet fuel, it's uh, 
uh, 10 uh, times less in terms of the um, uh, volumetric density. And even if we go to liquid hydrogen, yeah, we, there is still 3x delta in terms of um, um, uh, in terms of the lower uh, energy density. And uh, of course, uh, here uh, we go to um, uh, we, we leverage different um, uh, diff there are different ways to, uh, to to improve that uh, and uh, overcome this um, uh, uh, basically drawback in terms of them. Um, volumetric losses, but uh, some of them include um, uh, actually leveraging uh, uh, the fact that uh, hydrogen uh, hydrogen electric powertrain has a significantly higher um, efficiency. So, for example, uh, the fuel cell system which we are using now has uh, about 50, uh, just a bit north of 50 percent uh, um, efficiency compared to, let's say, 20, 30 percent in uh, uh, in turbines, but of course, um, you know, other solutions would be uh, to, uh, to to have different um, uh, design of the airframe to actually allow uh, more um, space uh, for storing hydrogen. The last but not the least is uh, the um, uh, certification. Certification is uh, uh, is a long process, as uh, um, as most of you know in uh, in aviation. It's uh, uh, we not only need to demonstrate and uh, show that it's uh, te te technically solid uh, and we can fly on hydrogen, but also we can certify that. And uh, uh, that's exactly uh, what uh, uh, a significant portion of our time will be dedicated. And we are working together with the different uh, civil aviation authorities, for example, um, uh, UK CIA, on uh, how to uh, develop uh, uh, certain um, hypothetical standards, because uh, currently there are no standards for hydrogen uh, uh, used in, uh, uh, in um, uh, fuel cell uh, propulsors uh, um, uh, in aviation. But um, also we will develop uh, the means of compliance to this um, uh, hypothetical uh, uh, um, standards, uh, which will be uh, by the end of our journey in the next uh, couple of years, uh, uh, they will uh, take shape uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, they will be the basis uh, for the regulatory approvals uh, of the, the powertrain. So um, we are still a startup and uh, this is how it all started uh, about uh, three years ago. I just uh, showed this picture just uh, uh, for the inspiration for the students uh, in the first place. So we call it uh, El, uh, flying El Camino, uh, uh, an old uh, car uh, on which we just uh, mounted uh, the, the the propeller with um, uh, uh, with the, with the electrical motor, and uh, we just used that as um, as the first uh, test bed for our uh, for our technology. Uh, that was done uh, originally in uh, California. and uh, the first uh, flight uh, we did uh, was uh, uh, using, Electrical motor and um, uh, and the batteries, and uh, we did some uh, test flights uh, uh, originally uh, there. And uh, at the end of uh, uh, 2019, uh, beginning of 2020, we moved uh, to uh, uh, to Cranfield, to the UK, and you can see our blue bird, which uh, has flown in the skies of uh, uh, Cranfield. Uh, we got um, uh, uh, a great support uh, from uh, uh, from UK government. Uh, to uh, uh, develop uh, the, the hydrogen electric powertrain um, uh, for the uh, six-seat uh, aircraft. Uh, we use this similar uh, aircraft uh, to what we used in, uh, in the States. It's the Piper Malibu. And uh, we, um, we have flown it multiple times uh, uh, in, um, uh, in Cranfield. We finished uh, uh, one of the testing programs uh, uh, and uh, we are starting the uh, final stage of um, uh, of the testing program, uh, which uh, will um, uh, basically allow us to do the two to three hundred nautical mile mission uh, uh, in uh, at the end of uh, March, uh, at the beginning of um, uh, February. And uh, this is uh, you remember I was talking about our vision uh, of how uh, this whole. Um, uh, hydrogen ecosystem will work um, in um, uh, at the airport, and this is exactly uh, how we realized that. You can see some solar panels uh, at the airport, uh, 
uh, we installed uh, our electrolyzer, uh, which uh, produces uh, uh, a few kilograms of uh, hydrogen per day. We store it uh, in uh, in the hydrogen truck, uh, which you can see. Uh, we, you can, uh, if you go to uh, to campus, you can see uh, it's parked uh, next to Arisk uh, building, and uh, we fuel it. Um, uh, uh, we fuel our aircraft uh, from um, from this truck, and. Um, uh, in uh, at the end of September, uh, we did our um, uh, historic flight, uh, first flight on uh, hydrogen, and uh, that was the largest uh, commercial size uh, hydrogen electric uh, aircraft. And uh, uh, Ian uh, is uh, in the picture, uh, together with uh, with our team and uh, and and the Minister of uh, Aviation. So it was uh, great times. Uh, and uh, uh, since then, uh, we actually. Um, uh, installed um, new tanks, which allow us to uh, uh, accomplish this uh, mission, uh, which I just uh, mentioned between 200 and 300 nautical miles, which we will do in the next uh, uh, couple of months. And this is uh, how it all fits. It's uh, uh, it's a cut drawing, but uh, whoever is uh, at Canfield, you're welcome to see, to come and see uh, what is uh, inside of the aircraft. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, so-called ZA250 uh, powertrain, and uh, it's it's a good stepping stone in terms of the technolo technology development and uh, uh, getting uh, the important lessons uh, for us, uh, because uh, uh, we just uh, kick uh, kicked off uh, a bigger program, which is. Uh, uh, the program um, which will uh, have on the output the 600 uh, kilowatt um, uh, powertrain, uh, we call it uh, ZA600. It will um, uh, be um, basically the drop-in replacement of the uh, PT6 uh, uh, engine uh, with uh, 600 kilowatt uh, uh, peak and uh, 450 kilowatt uh, uh, continuous power. And uh, uh, due to the, the weight considerations, as, uh, as I talked about, uh, we will have about 50% uh, 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 penalty in terms of the, uh, the range uh, with the same payload of the, of the aircraft. And uh, we anticipate that uh, we will be able to close uh, uh, that gap uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in the few years uh, after that. And, uh, we just uh, acquired the aircraft, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be door near to to uh, two to eight, which we will uh, start retrofitting with uh, uh, with the uh, 600 kilowatt uh, uh, powertrain. So uh, you can see this uh, aircraft or similar aircraft uh, uh, here at the beginning of our uh, uh, journey, and uh, in uh, uh, at the end of 2023, at the beginning of 2024, uh, we. Uh, hope to finish the uh, certification effort uh, of our powertrain and start commercial operations, uh, and then of course uh, uh, go forward to uh, to the bigger aircraft uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, you know narrow body and um, uh, and um, uh, wide body uh, going forward. So um, um, when we talk uh, about uh, the small aircraft. Um, we we had certain discussions with different operators. Uh, it's important to think about um, uh, where, uh, how will this help uh, us, uh, the the users uh, or the passengers um, at at the end of the day. And uh, I think that uh, not only uh, we can achieve uh, uh, different um, savings in terms of uh, you know the costs, uh, the operating costs. Uh, but uh, uh, and uh, the zero emissionness uh, of the um, uh, of the air transportation, but also we believe that we can unlock a significant uh, a number of uh, other means of uh, transportation and uh, a lot of different uh, local airports. And um, um, uh, for example, um, I, I think that it's uh, it, it's it's relevant to uh, um, to all countries in the developed world. In California, for example. Um, uh, only about 15 airports are used uh, for the scheduled transportation with uh, uh, with a total number of two uh, over 250 uh, airports. Similar um, uh, situation is uh, in the UK when uh, there are only uh, give or take uh, 40 um, airports which are using uh, utilized for the scheduled um, uh, service with uh, 
over 200 airports, which are used only mostly for the um, uh, general aviation. So uh, by doing this uh, um, 19-seat program in a sustainable uh, fashion, uh, we will be able to um, unlock this uh, more sort of local and point-to-point -point, um, uh, um, um, transportation uh, in the country. Um, we don't want uh, we 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 are a small start, but uh, a startup, but uh, we like to think big, and uh, this is uh, some of the our ideas and uh, how we see the future. So. Um, at, at the end of the day, this is uh, some um, uh, uh, some ideas about uh, how the ZA uh, two, uh, 2000 will look like. So basically the two, two megawatt uh, uh, powertrain, which will be able to uh, uh, to power something um, uh, on the order of um, uh, 60 to 70 seat uh, aircraft. Uh, and uh, we believe that it's uh, it, it can uh, have a similar look to what we have today instead of uh, uh, the um, uh, gas turbine is inside. Uh, we would have uh, basically the uh, the fan or the turbofan, uh, uh, the air compressor, which will needs to uh, achieve quite significant uh, compression uh, uh, ratios to uh, uh, to be uh, able to use um, uh, uh, efficient uh, in the efficient manner um, the hydrogen uh, uh, fuel stacks. Uh, and um, uh, hopefully by that time there will be significant uh, uh, improvements in terms of uh, uh, the fuel cell technology, which uh, I just uh, talked about. And uh, of course, um, there are some uh, efficiency measures which we can, um, uh, we can achieve uh, uh, by, um, by using the back pressure of, the, uh, of, of this whole setup. And uh, this, is, uh, this is just uh, the, the ideas, but uh, I think that they, uh, they uh, can and will uh, become uh, the reality. You know, we have uh, certain discussions uh, uh, with different partners, including uh, uh, Cranfield uh, University, um, and uh, we are anticipating that we will uh, we will work on uh, uh, on on the designs and the ide implementation of uh, ideas uh, similar to um, what I just discussed uh, I discussed and described here. And uh, the ambition in the, uh, why why the design like that is important because uh, the ambition. Uh, in airspace is uh, is there uh, the ambition in uh, uh, in making it uh, the zero emission uh, transportation is there and uh, we participated in the, uh, at the end of this uh, uh, last summer uh, in the kick of the uh, of the Jet Zero Council which has um, which which is chaired by um, uh, by uh, Boris Johnson and uh, the uh, the goal of um, of that uh, council is to uh, actually bring us uh, in the next decade to uh, 100 plus seat for the transatlantic flight and uh, this is exactly what uh, uh, what we are starting uh, um, working on we believe in uh, step uh, by step uh, small improvements um, and uh, you know going from the six seater now we are going to the 19 seater and uh, then going to the bigger, um, you know, turbofan or um, uh, uh, the uh, design, uh, as I just uh, showed uh, showed above, and um, we believe that uh, this is uh, uh, this is already the, the present. It's not uh, it's not the future anymore. And uh, uh, this is uh, all happening at um, uh, at Cranfield. Uh, uh, again, thank you, uh, thank you, Cranfield University, Cranfield Airspace, and. Uh, um, uh, and Sir Peter, uh, Ian, and uh, the rest of the uh, of the team uh, uh, to uh, to uh, to help us make it happen. And this is uh, a part of our team in front of the building, which uh, some of uh, you actually uh, recognize. So I think that that's um, uh, that's it, um, and uh, I am happy to answer uh, any of uh, and any and all of your questions. Well, спасибо большое за отличную лекцию, Сергей. Thank you very much for excellent presentation. I will now uh, open the forum for questions and perhaps uh, uh, hand over to Craig to to start with the ones that uh, he he managed to capture from the chat. Thanks, uh, Marin. Thanks, Sergei. Uh, as you can imagine, your uh, very interesting talk has prompted a number of uh, interesting questions. So, some of which you answered as you as you went along, um, and some of which colleagues have uh, 
had a go at answering in the chat, but let, let me try to paraphrase and condense it into a few questions and, and, a, and a few topics. So we've got some questions around the infrastructure um, so far. So what, what do you think uh, about the issues to do with the increased uh, energy production that we're going to require and the, the increased uh, production by renewables to, to make our green uh, hydrogen aircraft? How, how do you see that developing? At the moment, it looks like a huge challenge, a huge infrastructure change. How do you see that progressing? So first of all, um, uh, the um, um, renewable power generation is uh, is already, uh, you know, as 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 I said, it's not uh, the future; it's the present, right? And uh, uh, the um, uh, there are days uh, and uh, actually uh, I think months uh, when the, the coal is not using any, uh, is not used in the UK anymore. So the same um, uh, uh, the uh, there are days when. Uh, you know, close to 100% of uh, all power generation is coming from uh, renewable uh, sources. And uh, renewable, uh, renewable power generation is actually uh, becoming uh, competitive and it's cheaper on the LCOE, which is levelized cost of electricity than traditional power generation. So it will replace the traditional power generation. But as I said, there will be quite significant, uh, um, uh, there will be more capacity uh, then needed just to be uh, just just due to the fact that the energy system goes uh, through the uh, peaks and uh, lows in the, in the consumption, and due uh, and during the uh, the the peaks uh, of um, uh, of of the product of production of electricity, uh, green uh, hydrogen will be produced uh, at, uh, at at the lowest price. And um, we just, um, uh, I just got some numbers, um, I just, just had the discussion with one of the energy companies here in the UK. And uh, we understand that even with today's uh, levels of, uh, uh, of about um, uh, 45 uh, pounds uh, per megawatt um, uh, hour, which is supposed to decrease uh, by, uh, by the factor of two, uh, roughly in the next uh, uh, decade or so, uh, uh, and uh, with today's uh, cost of uh, electrolyzers, we can already see the uh, the, the 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 price uh, of the uh, green hydrogen on the order of uh, three and a half uh, pounds uh, per uh, per kilo. And this is just without any improvements, any optimization. And uh, of course, these numbers will uh, will will improve by at least, as I said, the factor of three or four and forward. Okay, thanks, Sergey. And um, we've got a question or two around the powertrain and the propulsion system. Mm -hmm. So may, maybe you touched upon this uh, back on slide 13. Uh, there's questions around how far you think the fuel cell based propulsion system would go in terms of the uh, power to weight ratio. It looked like you were suggesting with some improvements, it might challenge a, a turboprop, but do, do you see it? Uh, going up to power large aircraft, to, uh, twin aisle aircraft. So, for example, in the configuration uh, uh, like this, you can see that it's um, the fuel cells uh, uh, will be uh, will be here on the back side of this um, uh, of the turbo cell uh, configuration. And uh, even if we here we will have uh, certain penalties in terms of the um, uh, the weight compared to the traditional um, uh, 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 traditional configuration of traditional turbines. Uh, we did uh, certain calculations uh, which uh, show that uh, um, uh, there can be some savings uh, uh, achieved uh, due to the uh, high energy density of, um, uh, of of hydrogen, of course. And uh, um, we have done uh, certain calculations in terms of the payload, um, uh, of course, the penalty and the payload. And we uh, understand that um, uh, we uh, will be will be limited uh, in terms of uh, uh, the distance uh, if we use uh, um, uh, if 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 we don't have significant modifications uh, in terms of the. Uh, the, the, the power, uh, the, uh, the airframe, but, uh, but still we will be able to serve uh, the majority of the flights. And if you, if you think about this, 
uh, more than 50% or about 50% of all the flights uh, which, um, which are taking place by commercial aviation are actually below 500 uh, miles, okay? And uh, for, um, uh, for, the, uh, for, for, for that type of distance, uh, we will be able to preserve uh, the payload and, um, uh, and the passenger uh, load uh, for the aircraft. Okay, thanks, Sergey. And f following on a bit from that, do, do, you're showing us a hybrid uh, turbine and fuel cell there. Do, do you see a role for, for batteries as well? It was observed the power density shortcomings of fuel cells and the superior power density of, of batteries. Do, do you see a role for, for batteries? So um, earlier on, we were discussing, you know, different uh, hybrid uh, configurations, but if you, if you do the math, you can see that uh, uh, actually the weight of the batteries uh, and the energy density of the batteries is just uh, not going to make the cut. Uh, it's possible to um, uh, to see the batteries may be used uh, uh, for, you know, maybe certain uh, as a certain buffer, or for um, you know for some emergency or for takeoff. Um, um, uh, to, to provide an extra oomph uh, during the takeoff, but uh, the a the calculations need to be done on the individual basis. But b uh, uh, if you if you uh, use different types of um, uh, propulsion or energy storage uh, on the aircraft, the certification effort will be significantly harder. Okay, and uh, in general. If you talk to the uh, civil um, aviation authority, uh, they don't like they don't like the batteries, and especially large amounts of batteries. And for example, we needed to uh, uh, transport uh, the batteries from uh, uh, from the uh, from the U.S. to here, uh, and we couldn't do it on the aircraft, just you know because of the uh, of the regulation. So uh, therefore, using uh, large amounts of um, energy stored uh, in, in the batteries uh, uh, on the aircraft, I think that it's, uh, it, it will be um, a, a more complex uh, journey than using just uh, uh, one type of the, uh, uh, of the energy uh, source. Thanks, uh, Sergey. So we've got some questions around the aircraft uh, configuration and, and, and aircraft design. Uh, one is about how you, you deal with the additional volume required for, for the storage of, of the hydrogen um, and, and how you see that being dealt with. There, there's um, suggestions, uh, questions around how you deal with the big tanks and the voluminous tanks and the additional drag and, and questions about uh, do, do you see a route to retrofit them into to current airframes with conventional shapes or, 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 or is it going to be a radical new airframe shape? So um, currently you saw uh, the, the drawings of our six seater. So we are using, we installing uh, the tanks inside. So there is no penalty in terms of the drag or um, uh, or uh, yeah, basically there is no uh, no penalty in terms of that and the, and the efficiency. Now, if uh, uh, if we go to the 19 seat aircraft, we did some uh, uh, some simulations, uh, preliminary simulations. If we install uh, hydrogen uh, tanks uh, on the hard points under the wings of uh, let's say Dornier two to eight. We will have something like uh, five to ten percent uh, um, uh, increase in drag and uh, uh, and efficiency. Uh, so, what it means is that uh, we uh, we would need to somehow overcome that, uh, and uh, we can uh, of course uh, produce an, an, a bit of the extra oomph to uh, you know during uh, during the takeoff. It it won't be as uh, as big a problem uh, during uh, uh, during the cruising, but. Uh, it will be during the takeoff, but uh, essentially, what we are anticipating that uh, for the uh, 19 seat aircraft, we can easily uh, install um, uh, hydrogen tanks uh, on the existing uh, hard points of the uh, of the 19 seat aircraft. At least, uh, 
uh, for the airframes, which uh, uh, will be used uh, as, uh, uh, as, as our launch um, airframes. And that's, uh, as I said, Dornier 228 uh, Twin Order, which uh, have a high wing configuration. Now, if you go to, and, and the good thing about them is that they're not high performance airframes, right? If you go to, um, uh, uh, to PC-12 and uh, the, the low wing, um, uh, aircraft, then of course uh, there is, uh, uh, it, it will be much uh, harder to install um, uh, the external tanks. And therefore I think that it's, uh, if we do something, uh, we would need to do something with, um, uh, with the liquid hydrogen, okay? Now for the larger uh, airframes, uh, I think that uh, the, uh, the most uh, reasonable solution actually is to go with uh, uh, with the liquid hydrogen tanks uh, installed um, uh, inside of the uh, aircraft. Okay, thanks. And, and to, to make our sector green very quickly, do, do you see any economical route to, to retrofit the current large long range fleet with hydrogen technology? Uh, there are two things. One is you need to, uh, to make it to, to develop the technology first and then uh, go through the significant uh, certification pro, uh, process. And uh, we anticipate that uh, the, uh, the narrow body um, aircraft will be flying in, uh, in hydrogen in, uh, in the next uh, decade, somewhere, you know, 20, uh, 2030, 2035, um, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, uh, time frame, But, um, uh, in order to have um, uh, a broader adoption, and this is uh, some of the calculations which we do together with some of the major airlines, uh, given the fact that um, uh, the uh, airframes, they, uh, uh, they, they have 20, even 30, 30 years um, uh, in, in operations. Uh, so if we uh, start introducing uh, the new aircraft in, uh, in 2030, there will be, or you know, 2035, 2040, there, there will be still some legacy uh, aircraft um, uh, still flying, okay? So this is um, uh, the situation similar to uh, what we see in, uh, uh, in electrical vehicles. Even if, uh, for example, in Norway, uh, there is, uh, I think 80% of uh, all electrical vehicles, I mean, all, all the vehicles are sold uh, as electrical vehicles, still there is st a big number of, uh, of the old uh, internal combustion uh, vehicles on the road. The, the similar situation will be in, um, in airspace uh, for the time being. Can I ask a question, Craig, which I believe was uh, probably less covered in the questions and in the presentation? Sure, Martin, please. So this is related to, I mean, the hydrogen economy was, was announced by Spencer Abraham in the States nearly 20 years ago. And, and I think my question is more related to safety, security and infrastructure for this to be able to, to work. We need a generally safer world with, with uh, fewer terrorists, that's for sure. Uh, you probably follow Polar Amenko's Universal Hydrogen uh, Initiatives. He is thinking of supplying capsules of hydrogen to various airports because you cannot have uh, electrolysis at every airport in the quantities that are needed. Uh, if you supply uh, those with uh, trucks, we'll probably need uh, three to ten, 10 times more trucks Per, per load for the hydrogen, the distribution across the airports within the country and different countries. So I believe that to me, the, the, the challenge is not so much the technical challenge of improving the fuel cell for the aircraft configuration. It's more infrastructure, distribution, safety and security. What would be your thoughts on that? Safety and security are um, extremely important uh, for for hydrogen uh, in general uh, because uh, um, uh, everybody uh, you know ha has uh, in in their minds the Hindenburg uh, you know twentieth and nineteen thirties um, you know type of uh, burnt um, uh, blimps uh, and and stuff. So uh, currently uh, the uh, the safety uh, of um, 
uh, of hydrogen is actually uh, quite impressive. Uh, if you think about uh, the storage tanks, uh, they are manufactured to withstand uh, at least two X uh, of the burst pressure. Uh, and uh, this is, the, if, you, uh, if, if you have 350 atmospheres uh, uh, in the tank, uh, that means that uh, they can withstand at least uh, 800 uh, atmospheres, okay? Then uh, the small caliber um, weaponry is used to actually shoot uh, um, at those tanks and uh, um, make sure that uh, they don't uh, explode uh, or the hydrogen does not, uh, doesn't explode or burn um, you know, during those events. And uh, the good thing about hydrogen is that it's a light molecule. So it goes up in the air. And as long as you don't have uh, closed spaces where you accumulate hydrogen, then it, it goes up in the air and uh, dissipates very easily. And uh, it, um, it, it has um, uh, different parameters for the uh, different temperature for the, uh, uh, for the, the, uh, of the flame, uh, which is significantly lower. So you don't, uh, you don't get uh, uh, the secondary um, uh, effects of, um, of that. So those are the points which uh, contribute to um, uh, safety of, the, uh, of uh, hydrogen as a fuel. Now, as I said, it's, uh, it, it's the industry which, is, uh, uh, which already is using 100, uh, producing and using 100 million tons of, uh, of hydrogen a year. Uh, so um, uh, from, from the transportation, we uh, um, anticipate that it will be uh, maybe 30% uh, increase uh, of that number would be de dedicated uh, uh, to, um, uh, to increase or uptake uh, of, uh, um, of, of hydrogen use in, in transportation. So it's, um, uh, it's nothing unusual for the, uh, for the industry to be, uh, to be used. But of course, you know, transporting hydrogen and including uh, uh, liquid hydrogen, of course, is, uh, you know, we need to, to do it uh, uh, safely. But uh, again, um, for example, we are transporting quite significant uh, numbers of uh, all, the, all the gases, but also the liquid, um, um, uh, uh, liquid gases, for example, liquid nitrogen for different indust industrial processes. And this is done uh, at scale uh, pretty safely. So uh, I think that we just uh, need to uh, to leverage whatever is done uh, now uh, in uh, in the industry and bring it to uh, to use in the, in the airports. And uh, frankly, we are working with some of the mega majors, oil majors, which uh, are currently already big players in um, in the industry uh, in hydrogen, because as I said, hydrogen is used very widely for uh, for uh, for oil refinery. Uh, uh, or refining processes, and um, uh, they are very concerned about uh, uh, safety. And uh, uh, together with uh, some of them, we uh, we will work on uh, developing uh, in, uh, things related to the fueling standards, uh, to the uh, purity of hydrogen, and uh, we are participating in different. Uh, um, uh, groups, for example, uh, uh, SAI and Euro uh, CAE in terms of developing uh, different safety standards uh, for the use of hydrogen on the airplane and uh, on, the air, uh, on, on the airfields. So it's, uh, it is an important consideration which we are taking uh, very seriously, uh, but um, the wealth of knowledge which exists uh, already, I think, uh, let us believe that it's, uh, you know, we can handle it. Hey, thank you. So, Craig, over to you if there are more questions. We've got another about five minutes before we close the, the, the question session. Well, thanks, Marin. Thanks, Sergey. Let, let's go for two more questions. The, the, the most common theme in the question box, I think it's fair to say, was safety, um, which you've d discussed a lot there in your, your last answer. But there's a couple of particular questions around surviving incidents and accidents in flight. Um, so what, what, what's your thoughts on mitigations for or surviving things like lightning strike and tank rupture, for example, through, through rotor burst? How, how does the hydrogen tank uh, cope with that? I mean, first of all, um, uh, the hydrogen storage is not um, going to be next to the... Um, um, to the uh, you know rotating machines uh, that's number one uh, they they're going to be separated uh, uh, 
um, you know, horizontally, vertically, et, uh, et cetera. So uh, that's uh, number two. Uh, I already answered uh, uh, by, um, uh, you know, some of the tests which uh, have already been performed with shooting of the, uh, of the large ca caliber uh, guns uh, and uh, not, um, not, not creating the, um, uh, the, uh, the explosion events. And I think that the similar tests will be done uh, here. Now, um, in terms of um, uh, how uh, additional safety uh, features which uh, are uh, implemented and, uh, can, uh, and, and utilized, for example, by us is uh, uh, number one, uh, we have uh, um, separate uh, venting ports to the outside of the, of the vehicle which can uh, quickly evacuate of uh, hydrogen if there is a significant uh, change uh, or drop in pressure in, uh, uh, in hydrogen tanks. That's number one. And uh, uh, number two, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the encapsulation or the, the sector uh, or uh, you know, the compartment where the uh, hydrogen tank is supposed to be installed, needs to be ventilated quite significantly. And uh, this is what we achieve in uh, uh, currently with, uh, with our Piper. So um, uh, the volume of, um, uh, of all hydrogen, which is inside can be evacuated in, 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 uh, in basically a minute uh, by, uh, by using uh, uh, the, uh, the, the current ventilation system. So uh, the combination, as I said, uh, uh, the, the venting plus uh, ventilation plus different uh, uh, hydrogen sensors, which will allow us to do some uh, early warnings, uh, I think that they will help to, uh, uh, to increase the, uh, the, the safety of the uh, hydrogen use. Uh, thank you, Sergey. Uh, a question about the, the market, do, do you have uh... Do you see some interest already from operators, either of the small aircraft, the six-seaters, or, or the regional aircraft? Yes. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> so we have uh, between uh, 15 and uh, 20 LOIs uh, uh, with different uh, operators. Mostly, it's uh, 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 regional and sub-regional uh, operators, which uh, which have um, uh, operations. Uh, related to very thin routes uh, or with uh, uh, operations of the 19 seat uh, aircraft. And uh, this is mostly in, in Europe and the States and uh, Asia Pacific. But uh, also we have uh, some discussions with the uh, cargo operators, which are interested in uh, actually bringing the retrofit 19 seaters to uh, uh, for the uh, for, for the uh, small parcel or cargo deliveries as well, so yes, uh, the the numbers are increasing, and uh, I think that this is uh, extremely important to work with uh, operators because uh, they create the pool, uh, um, and uh, they they create the push on the uh, on the on the OEMs uh, um, on on the airframe OEMs to um, uh, actually. Uh, start to uh, um, uh, implement uh, the zero emission solutions and uh, and work with the companies uh, like us uh, to integrate um, uh, the uh, 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 integrate uh, our hydrogen electric powertrain and uh, frankly not only with the with the, with the um, operators we just we have different discussions but also we have um, discussions with a couple of different. Uh, um, OEMs who are interested to integrate our powertrain into um, uh, into the airframe. Great, thanks, Sergey. I, I feel the need to finish with a short technical question. Uh, do you see any scope to capture the water to make it a true zero emission aircraft? So uh, there is uh, a scope for that work, of course. Uh, and uh, as I said, the beauty of, uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, fuel cell is that it produces droplets, small droplets of, um, uh, of water, and uh, we, we can condense it um, and uh, you know, spit it out uh, um, as, uh, you know, in the form of icicles, for example, which uh, create uh, as a minimum of the you know, environmental impact. And by the way, the interesting thing is that uh, 
for example, in uh, in Toyota, we have uh, in Toyota Mirai, which uh, which we are using. There is a, a little button which is uh, marked by H2O. Uh, basically, you press the button, and uh, then the, just the water starts dripping uh, out of the uh, tailpipe. <laughs> so uh, similar. Um, uh, similar provision can be implemented, um, um, I guess, here on the on the aircraft as well. Great, thanks very much. J just to finally say, the chat box is full of praise and thanks for your presentation. So th thank thank you is the the overwhelming message, and I I'll hand back to to Marin now. Well, thank you very much, Craig, for uh, and for Andy, who has been working behind the scenes as well. Uh, I think uh, we, uh, we will attempt to send this lecture to uh, the participants and also we will forward the chat questions to Sergey. And uh, the good thing is that he's on campus and in, in better times, I'm sure he'll be approachable on a personal level to talk because this, this is a promising uh, technology and we wish him all the best. Now I will uh, pass on to Professor Ian Gray to formally thank you, Sergey. So, Ian, over to you. Thank you, uh, Marin, and, and thank you, Sergey, for uh, an absolutely fantastic um, presentation and 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 really a fantastic way in which you. Uh, answered the uh, questions as well. And I think um, as Craig says, when you take time uh, after this session, just to uh, reflect on some of the comments in the chat bar, which of course is a, a unique feature in terms of doing these things on uh, MS Teams, you, 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 you will see that the uh, audience has really, really uh, appreciated your, your presentation itself. I have to say, I mean, from a Cranfield point of view, um, thanks Marin, uh, Craig and, and, and Andy, I mean, it's great to see Cranfield, uh, the Royal Aeronautical Society branch of Cranfield itself being active in this uh, particular time. And, and, and I can't think of a more appropriate subject to have actually chosen tonight. You know, Vero Avia, first hydrogen fuel cell flight in, in the world, um, done at Cranfield. So it just seemed very, very appropriate that this was a, a topic for a, a lecture at the um, Cranfield branch. And, and I have to say again, at a time when the sector and the industry is going through so many uh, challenges, it's, a, it's an absolute inspiration to kind of hear about some of the uh, future visions. The title of your talk, uh, Sergey, Hydro, ev Hydrogen Aviation is Becoming a, a, a Reality. Well, I mean, Cranfield has been involved in the hydrogen agenda for a, a long time. I'm Professor Pelidis will uh, talk about the work on the, the cryoplane. I was just looking the other day at a um, partnership arrangement we made with EasyJet some five years ago, where we were talking, getting students to look at the, uh, the potential uh, opportunities for, uh, for hydrogen. But you're right, hydrogen is gaining momentum now. And I think you gave a really, really good insight into uh, how that, that's evolving. I, I recall, Sergey, uh, the very first call I had back in early 2019 from UK government before any funding had been announced saying, had I ever heard of Zero Avia? Do they th what do I think of it? Is it something we should be trying to uh, attract to the UK? And my goodness, what a good decision that was to uh, fund you and, and bring this uh, Californian uh, entrepreneur programme across here to, to the UK. Um, I won't repeat all the things you said in the, uh, the lecture. I mean, it was full of facts and full of technical uh, information. For me, I kind of pulled out uh, a number of kind of high-level uh, points that you, you, you reinforced, and you did so in the questions as well. One is about, this isn't just about the product, it's about the ecosystem as well. As well. And I, you know, I think um, that the lecture and the answers to the questions reinforce the importance that you as a company and you see about uh, not just addressing the aircraft, but addressing the airport infrastructure. I think that was a great point. The importance of the, the overall green life cycle. And there's no point having a green aeroplane if the hydrogen itself is produced in a, a non-green way. So the importance of the kind of green life cycle, and uh, you know, I was quite struck by the fact that less than 1% of hydrogen produced today is produced uh, in, in a green way. 
I thought you reinforced for me, I mean, you, you talked a lot about technology and technology is really important. And I thought the importance of the innovation side of things was great. And I, I just loved the picture you showed of the uh, El Camino, the uh, picture of the early test, test rig. And as you said in your talk itself, if you're trying to give inspiration to students, to people who kind of want to take their ideas and move them forward, say, what better picture was there than, 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 than that? You know, it just shows the very early days against a vision and, and, and what can be done. The first flight of the, uh, the aircraft, I mean, I was privileged to be there for the first flight. I've been at a number of first flight events through my career, and I have to say <clears throat> that stood up to the same tensions and the same excitement as all the other first flights. It was a, it truly was a, a, a great uh, day, and it was great to see the, uh, the footage and the uh, ER coverage. You have to be applauded in, in the way that you have secured great press coverage for just what you've um, achieved. And I, I like the way you painted the vision for the future as well. And, uh, you know, I think um, as you move into the Dornier 228 side, the 19-seater side, you kind of drew out the opportunities in the market, the opening up of small airports around the uh, UK, California. And I thought that was great. And a really, really exciting vision. And Anfield University very much has one to work with you to, uh, to be part of that. That's my overarching um, comment, just to kind of finish off a, a vote of thanks, is you know, in, a, in, a, in an audience um, like tonight, you, you had some experts, you had policy makers, decision makers, but you had students, you had some students there. And I, I think you painted um, for us a, a, you know, a real inspiration that at the time when many people are thinking, you know, is there a career ahead of me in the aerospace industry? The fleet of the world is, 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 is grounded. What you kind of illustrated is absolutely there's a future ahead of us and uh, you know, a real inspiration for, for students to be innovative, think about the, uh, the overall uh, ecosystem. Um, I, I thought that in that sense, um, in these difficult times, you left us with a really positive and an upbeat view of the future. So, Sergey, um, normally we would take you out for a, a meal or a dinner. I'd certainly love to have bought you a beer tonight and uh, and, and and celebrate. Um, I can't do that, but on behalf of everybody who is here uh, listening to your talk, thank you. It was superb, um, and I really look forward to uh, to uh, continuing to work with you. So, thank you very much, Sergey, and. For me, a, a, a round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you. Marin, you're still on mute. All the way through, but now you've just... <laughs> uh, just in case I say something stupid, which is not very rare. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Jan, for, for, for your uh, uh, kind words and I would also like to thank uh, Andy and Craig for uh, organizing the lecture and of course Ellie and her team uh, events for helping organizing the, the actual um, Zoom meeting and uh, the registration. So thank you all very much. And uh, I hope that uh, we continue despite what COVID throws at us, uh, the, the life of the Cranfield uh, branch of the Royal Nautical Society. So keep an eye on our web page and uh, hope to see you soon. And for the time, Sergei, once again, спасибо большое, and hope to see you soon. And all of you stay safe and, and good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye.